And welcome back to the broadcast, always staying ahead of issues, issues like civil rights and economic development and minority participation. That's Senator John Horn. He joins us now live in the studio. Senator Horn represents Senate District 26. Sir, good morning and thank you for being here. Well, it's good to be here. <laughs> Listen, let's get right into um, a conversation. I want to start uh, this morning with economic development yeah. and minority participation. Where are we as a state? Yeah, uh, we're, uh, if I had to give it a grade, it would be an F minus. Um, for whatever reason, Mississippi has not embraced the issue of minority participation as an economic development tool, a must for the state, given our population, of being almost 40% of the state's population and other minorities being here. Uh, what the state is doing as it relates to m minority participation is abysmal. Uh, I chaired a task force a few years ago, and the research that we came up with showed that the state spends in excess of $2 billion a year. And uh, African Americans and women are receiving less than 2% of that $2 billion a year, uh, somewhere around $48 million, uh, and, that, and that's uh, mostly going to women. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's, it's a horrible statistic. Uh, is one that we need to do more about. Uh, we're hoping that we can make some inroads in it. Uh, this year, we've got to do a disparity study. Uh, it's been on the books to do that study, which the Supreme Court said you have to do if you're going to put remedies in that are defensible. Mm -hmm. And and we've we've uh, passed the, the law saying do the disparity study, but we've never funded it. So let me ask you a question. Is it because we're not qualified, women and minorities are not qualified, or is it because of old practices, or is it because, you know, the decision makers just don't know? Well, uh, it, it, there's a small pool of black businesses, and that's granted, uh, but even that small pool has a hard time finding the door to opportunity. Uh, it's about people doing what they've always done before. It's about uh, uh, folks who have um, uh, inside tracks, quite frankly, who um, uh, wind up getting a lot of the work over and over again. Uh, some of it has to deal with, with um, uh, some of our businesses not having some of the tools like access to financing. Uh, but those are all solvable, mm -hmm. you know, but the, the old statement is where there's a will, there's a way, and we don't have enough people who've demonstrated the will to get this done in these agencies at this time. Gotcha. Senator, your voice has been loud, clear, and firm on uh, getting this Civil Rights Museum built. You know, yeah. there was an argument uh, about its location. I think that has finally been settled. Uh, we're going to be down at town. Uh, where are we with that project? Well, uh, the, the project is under construction. Uh, and one of the things that we wound up doing was uh, putting the History Museum and the Civil Rights Museum side by side. Uh, and that's going to save us about seven, eight million bucks um, because of shared services and shared space that they can enjoy. Uh, it's about a hundred million dollar project, a little over a hundred million. We've thus far gotten 54 million from the state of Mississippi. And this Civil Rights Museum is the only state supported and state originated Civil Rights Museum in the United States. Oh, wow. Uh, and um, we are going to do a, a, another $33 million this year in the, in the legislature to bring that total up to $87 million. And then we're raising another $16 million in the private sector. All right, health care, hot button issue. Uh, yeah. Even the fact that a health care quarter is on the way. Well, you know, I, I'd love to just see a, a, a health care alley. Uh, as it relates to the Affordable Care Act. Uh, we, we, we really need to get the governor somehow to get off this dime that he's on uh, about not accepting uh, the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. Uh, there are 300,000 Mississippians who would benefit from uh, getting Medicaid coverage under the expansion of the Affordable Care Act. 9,000 new jobs would be created. A nine billion dollar impact would be realized in Mississippi if we were to expand Medicaid, and the program would pay for itself. Uh, in the first three years, the uh, uh, program is 100 percent supported by the federal government, so it wouldn't cost Mississippi a dime. And and then in the successive years, we get up to a sliding scale where we finally are paying 10 percent at the end of the, of the day, but we're still getting 90 cents back 
out of every dollar that, that we, 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 uh, we put, that's put into the, the program. So uh, those are good economics as far as I'm concerned, and, and I, I think that uh, it, it's hard to argue with those numbers, and yet the governor continues to argue with them. It's hard to fathom why one would not get behind something that would create an economic boost to a state. Well, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, Mississippi has always enjoyed uh, a, a big return on the dollars it sends to, to Washington. For every dollar we send, we get $6 back. In this case, we get up to nine dollars back, and, and, and the first couple of years we get we get all the dollars back. So I mean, it, it just doesn't it doesn't doesn't ring true in terms of any kind of logic. Absolutely. Real quick, um, um, fully funding um, Mississippi adequate education program. Yeah. It's only happened twice since its inception. What's going to happen this session? Well, uh, we're close to, to to doing a full funding next term, and I think that's all political. Uh, we do have a ballot initiative uh, that will be voted on by the citizens of Mississippi in November 2015. And that ballot initiative is, is, is to ask the question, do you want the legislature to fully fund the Mississippi Adequate Education Funding Program? The, 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 the local school districts are missing billions of dollars right. you know, since 1999 when that program was first implemented. Your thoughts on Common Core? I think that we'll probably wind up uh, passing uh, a new set of measures that are very similar, if not identical, to Common Core, except we won't call it that. <laughs> and finally, Senator, you know, we talked off camera uh, in, about health care. Uh, we talked about HIV and AIDS. Mississippi yes, has some yes. staggering numbers, Jackson in particular, particularly West Jackson and South Jackson. What can be done legislatively to help? Well, uh, I, I don't know how much uh, we can do legislatively. That there are some, some things in terms of funding to, to bring about greater awareness, to provide for better treatment, to, to provide um, housing for victims of, of, of HIV AIDS. Uh, the State Department of Health has program dollars that c come from the Center for Disease Control. Uh, so a lot of those dollars are going un unspent. There's opportunity out there. Uh, but we've got to get past the stigma of AIDS right. uh, before we can really get to the heart of, of getting it treated and, 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 and properly maintained for those folks who were victims of it. Absolutely. Great. Senator, thank you, thank sir. You. Appreciate you being with us. Hey, listen, stay with us. There's more on the other side. Back in a moment. <laughs> 